If you've taken a multivariable calculus class, you've probably learned about implicit differentiation in the multivariable context, and you've probably seen a formula like this. And it might be a little weird and confusing, and I'm going to explain where this comes from. The summary of the video is, it's nothing new, the formula is just there to scare you. Just like in the one variable case, implicit differentiation is just the chain rule. Nothing new. So what's the deal? I'm going to start off by going back to the one variable case because everything works exactly the same. So throw back to single variable calculus. This is the kind of problem that we solve when we first study implicit differentiation. Typically, you're asked to do something like compute the derivative of y with respect to x when x and y are related by an implicit equation. So when, say, for example, x squared plus y squared equals 1. Classic single variable calculus problem. What do we do? The whole idea behind implicit differentiation in the one variable setting is that you just pretend that y is a function of x, and then you use the chain rule, and that's it. So pretend that y is a function of x. And then the thing that we're looking for is some kind of derivative with respect to x. So to get that, I just apply the d by dx operator to this whole equation and solve for the quantity that I care about. So pretend that y is a function of x, and then I'll apply the derivative and use the chain rule. <laughs> All right, so let's do that. Taking the derivative of both sides here gives, on the right we get 0 because the derivative of 1 is 0. On the left here, the derivative with respect to x of 2x, sorry, of x squared, I spoiled the answer, is 2x. And then here, this is where the implicit differentiation came in. The derivative of y squared, by the chain rule, this is the function y quantity squared. Chain rule says do the derivative of the outside first. But then you have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. The derivative of y is dy dx. That equals 0. This was the quantity we wanted to find originally, so now we just have to do algebra, solve for it. So next, solve for dy dx, and we're done. Looks like <clears throat> if I move the 2x over here and then divide by a 2y, the 2s cancel out and we'll get that dy dx is negative x over y. Okay, and that is implicit differentiation in single variable calculus. I claim that it works exactly the same way in the multivariable setting. So let's bump up a dimension and do pretty much exactly the same thing. I won't use this formula yet because, like I said, it's not necessary. It's only there to scare you. I'll just do exactly what I did here, and then after that, I'll show you where this kind of thing comes from. So I'll keep this up here. In the multivariable setting, the only thing that changes is you have extra variables. So for example, instead of computing something like dy dx, given an implicitly defined curve, what we'll be asked to find is something like the partial of z with respect to x, given an implicitly defined surface. In other words, given an equation like, say, x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 1. Okay, 
This is now a multivariable calculus implicit differentiation problem. What changes? Nothing. Now, instead of pretending that y is a function of x, we're just going to pretend that z is a function of x and y. And because the kind of quantity I care about is a partial derivative with respect to x, the thing that I'll apply to both sides of the equation is the partial derivative operator. Okay, so let's do that. On the left here, <clears throat> I'm no longer taking a regular derivative, it's a partial derivative. The thing that I'm taking the derivative of is x squared plus y squared now plus z squared. Likewise, on the right, I have the partial derivative of x. Now, the partial derivative of 1 with respect to x is still 0, so this stays. And then on the left here, what happens? I'm taking the partial derivative with respect to x of this expression. This stays the same. The derivative of x squared with respect to x is 2x. The derivative of y squared with respect to x is 0. The one thing to be careful about is this term here. This is where this kicks into play. The derivative of z squared with respect to x is not 0 because we're pretending that z depends on x. Because z depends on x, we have to use the chain rule here. The chain rule says take the derivative of the outside and then multiply by the derivative of the inside. Looks a whole lot like the first example we did. Now, all we have to do, the quantity we care about is dz dx. We'll just solve for it. Now, in this case, to solve for dz dx, Move the 2x over, divide by 2z, the 2s cancel out again, and we find that dz dx is negative x over z. Done. That's a multivariable implicit differentiation problem. And as you can see, it is quite literally the exact same thing. Nothing's really changing, we just have other letters to keep track of. Okay. Where does this come from then, and what is this saying? Let me explain that. I claim it's still the exact same thing. We just have to do this a little more generally. So let me say, where does a formula like this come from? The motivation is exactly this kind of problem. You'll be given an implicitly defined surface, and you want to compute something like dz dx. Well, an implicitly defined surface is more generally going to be defined by an equation of the form capital F, some function of three variables, equals some constant. In our case, it was 1 could be any constant. So I have an implicitly defined surface, and I want to compute the change with respect to x, the change of z with respect to x. OK, how do we do this? Nothing changes. Pretend z is a function of x and y, and the thing that we care about is dz dx, so I'll apply the derivative operator to both sides. Okay. What changes here? Instead of being x squared plus y squared plus z squared like it was in the prior example, it's just whatever capital F is. And then on the right, I guess we've got c instead of 1. So we'll just take the derivative of a constant. <clears throat> 
And the next thing that we'll have to figure out is how this thing changes right here. DDX of a constant is still zero. This is where the multivariable chain rule comes into play. So what's happening? We need to take the x derivative of some function. What does the multivariable chain rule say? f depends on x, y, and z. So the tree I would draw would be something like this. But what is our underlying assumption here? We're pretending that z depends on x and y. So I have to extend the tree like this to get z depending on x and y. OK, so what does this picture tell me about this derivative? To track how f changes when x changes, that can happen in two ways. One of those ways is here. The other way is through this avenue of change. So we have to track both of these. The multivariable chain rule would say, well, on the one hand, the x derivative of this is this change in green would just be the x derivative of f. And then this change in red, chain rule says, multiply the change in f with respect to z by the change in z with respect to x. Ah, and then what are we trying to find? dz dx? Whoops, I just caught that I wrote something ridiculous earlier. Sorry about that. That should have said dz dx. Same as before, though, we just want to algebraically solve for dz dx. How do you do that? Move the capital F sub x over, divide by capital F sub z. And that's where this comes from. So when you get a formula like this, you shouldn't treat it as something new to memorize or some kind of new concept. It's really just the chain rule. It's just the multivariable chain rule applied like this. It's the same way with implicit differentiation in single variable calculus. Giving it a new name, calling it implicit differentiation, is kind of dishonest in a sense because it's just the chain rule. It's nothing new. And it's just new words, new formulas, new terms to scare you. <laughs>